and welcome. You're welcome to my professor note. This is Bhupesh Sharma. Hey, in this video, we are talking about the formalism. So formalist literary theory has two schools. One is the Russian formalism, another one is the new criticism. And here we are discussing the Russian formalism. So Russian formalism is originated in the Moscow and the Petersburg. This uh, formalist literary theory or a critical approach there to analyze the work of literature. It focuses merely on the pattern and the technical devices of the work and ignores and excludes this subject matter. That why a writer had written this work, what was the purpose. They do not pay attention neither to the writer, neither to his purpose or to any reference which is being made within the work to the outside world. For example, if there is a work written on the part of a partition or the World War War, it does not matter. How that work is written, its grammar, its syntax, literary devices, its form, its style, this is what they focus at. So, the Russian formalism, uh, which is a movement, it has two uh, scholarly group. One is your Moscow linguistic circle, which is found in 1950 by your Roman Jakobson. Another one is uh, the Petersburg Opazats. It is the Society for the Study of the Poetic Language. In this group, we have the Viktor Shklovsky, Boris Aikenbaum, and the Yuri Tainanov. There, what they say, they formalist literary critique, the language has two purposes. One purpose is the ordinary or the practical. Another one is the literary. In the ordinary one, we have every single day conversation. We share information. We share the message by making a reference to the outside world, which is outside the language itself. And they say in literary language, which is used to write the work of literature, here the purpose is to draw the reader's attention to words, in words, that language, not making reference outside, only focused on that, that language, knowing its structure, its linguistic structure. What they want to do is they want to bring literariness on the foreground and references which is made through the work to the background. This is what they want to do. Literariness is something which makes a work, a work of literature. So every single day, the kind of conversation we have, it is way different from the language that we use in writing the, the book of literature. Literariness, it makes it literariness because they use the literary devices. Your grammar is good, your syntax is good, your form is good right they want to pay attention on that not on the society and for that there is a term which is propounded by the victor shuklovsky in his 1917 work art as a technique which is an essay defamiliarization defamiliarization is something which distinguishes the literary language from the ordinary language here the main purpose is to show a familiar object in unfamiliar way by the use of language. A same thing you want to speak. And the main purpose is to stimulate a fresh perspective. Every single day you look at this word, every single day, and you're just seeing the same thing, you have the same perspective about it. But then a writer comes and he writes a poem about this world in such a way that brings a completely different picture and you're really mesmerized by it. For example, we really bothers when we see there is a spider net in, a, in the corner of our rooms, right? But what if, if you look at it as a woven tapestry, which is crafted to capture the house fly, a new perspective, really surprising. Oh, wow, this is what spider is doing. Really intelligent insect, huh? This is what you think then, right? And here, the important book, which are equally important to know from our exam perspective. And one thing I forget to mention here in the art as a technique, which is the essay written by the Victor Shuglovsky. He mentioned here the Lawrence Stern's work, the uh, your Tristan Shandy. That work is mentioned in the art as a technique. So make sure you write it down. It can come in the exam because it seems really important. And now your Roman Jacobson, who has given the this model of communication, the context, message, addresser, addressee, and your contact and code. 
Now, why he has given it? There is a six uh, element on which element you have main focus. Which element is dominating that will decide is this language ordinary or it is literary? If the main focus is on the message as on the code, then it is the literary. If the focus is on the context to the referent, you know, on the addresser and the addressee, why is it, it is being said to whom it is being said, then it is the ordinary. His most important work is the, the modern Russian poetry, which is published in the 1921. Beside this, we have Opus Brick, Boris Aikenbaum, Viktor Shklovsky, who have published Poetics in the 1919. Uh, then we have the work of the Vladimir Prok. Uh, he wrote this work, Morphology of the Folk Tales, in 1928. Beside this, we have this Theory of the Prose by the Viktor Shklovsky, published in the 1926 and later again in 1929 the another edition. So these are the important works, so make sure you remember them. And this formalistic term was used pejoratively. It was the derogative remark because they were putting the form over the content. Content in something which is the main aspect of that work. There is a writer, he is going out in the society, he is seeing things happening, you know, whatever people walking, the trees or environment, whatsoever he is looking at, this is something which is inspiring him. In reality and they are ignoring them they are putting the form over the content and for that they were criticized by the leo trotsky he has written a work called literature and revolution in 1924 right it was written from the marxist perspective from the marxist standpoint and this is where he criticized them that they should not put form over the content but content is the main thing here all right so this is about the formalism it has many aspects to know uh, very soon I will do the MCQs as well so we can look each and every single aspect even though we have just discussed all the subjective aspect of this uh, formalism I told you the most important work I told you the most important uh, theorists the main figures uh, the one thing which I uh, forget here that in the late 1930s this movement was suppressed by the Soviets because it seems really irrelevant to them and then they moved to Czechoslovakia and there they formed the Prague School of Linguistics again. And uh, Roman Jacobson was a central figure of it. So I hope you got to know something new about the formalism today. You learned something if you have learned to share this learning with the other people too. And if you're preparing for your net set gate examination, obviously you must be preparing. So notes are available if you want to get access to my notes. I have given the contacts below in the description box. You can let me know. I'll be more than happy to share all the Details with you. So till then time, my professor note, signing off.